This video is one of my coach athlete members videos. It's all about the relationship between 100 meter speed and long jump distance. The research is over 40 years old and it still holds up today in my opinion. I've often used it in other videos, but in this one, we focus specifically on the German's research. Hello and welcome to the latest Coach Athlete Members video. In this one, we're going to take a look at long jump research, some specific German research from the 1980s, which I believe is still relevant today. Now, I think it's important as coaches that we need to further our understanding of biomechanics and the more, shall we say, complex issues relating to jumping. In doing so, we can then reformulate perhaps better understand the work that we are doing with our athletes and what's possible and what's not. Now I've worked backwards in many ways in terms of my understanding of the long jump. Having been an international and coaching to a high standard, I then started to learn more and more about the biomechanics and the factors which affect long jump. And obviously I'm putting those across to you hopefully in these videos. This specific research looks, for example, at flight time and correlates 100 meter speed to jump distance. And I believe that that is particularly relevant in this day and age, despite the research being over 40 years old. In it, we look at the effects of speed on takeoff, what the Germans call landing depth, for example, and also time in the air. Hopefully in understanding those factors, it's going to give you a greater understanding yourself of the influences on the long jump. So let's get started. Okay, let's start looking into the research. Now the key element of the research is the influence of 100 meter time on long jump distance. And this research was presented in an old Kangaroo Club magazine from the 1980s, if I recall. And the research came from the German sports school in Cologne. And the main body of the research was produced by Gert Ossenberg. And there was input from Winfred Klepsch, who was a former European indoor long jump champion in 1980. So I suppose that gives you an idea of the age of the research. Now, on this particular slide here, I've collated some of the times relating from the 100 meters to jump distance. So, for example, the Germans indicated that being able to run 100 meters in 10 dead would give you a long jump possibility of 8 meters 80. I've termed world class as performances between 10.25 for the 100 meters to 10 dead and a range of jumps between 8 meters 50 and 8 meters 80. You can study the slide in your own time but I'll just look at the lower end of the spectrum times which I've said are good and useful for age group reference. These 100 meter times range from 11.2 to 11 dead and the range of jumping goes from 7 meters 36 to 7 meters 60 and from 12.35 for the 100 meters to 12.10 for the 100 meters with a range of jumps between 5 meters 98 and 6 meters 22. So this is going to give you a good idea of what a 100 meter time relates to in terms of jump distance. Now, for clarification, the Germans noted that a jumper who runs 100 meters in 11 seconds can, with a technique and jump power of equal quality, not jump further than 7 meters 60 plus 0.23 centimeters, 7 meters 83 being the total resultant distance. So they're indicating that it's possible to jump within the realms of, I think it's 3% of the indicated distance from the 100 meter time. For example, if jump power is optimized. Then they note, it's noted that if the jumper fails to reach the indicated distance related to speed, then there are significant technical issues. Now that's a very important factor to hold on to. If you've got a very fast jumper and they are not achieving the distances that the table indicates they should, then there is a fault and issue with their technical application, their jumping. Okay, the next slide and further clarification. It's indicated that, as I've said, long jump performance is determined by run-up speed and jump power, which they indicate as leg power and special takeoff power. And they note that although speed is crucial, it would be wrong to conclude that every athlete who is fast and has good takeoff power 
is a good long jumper. By that they're referring to the technical requirements. So you can be fast, but not have a good technique, mid-air technique and control, for example, with a landing position, which they call landing depth. More on that later. Crucially, they also note that these figures are only decisive if there is no great divergence between maximum speed over 10 to 30 meters and the 100 meter time. So therefore, your maximum velocity has to equate to that achievable over 10 to 30 meters, i.e. over a long jump run-up. So unless you can bring the same amount of speed to the final steps of the run-up for the long jump from the 100 meters, then you're not going to get that correlation between the 100 meter time and jump distance. As I said earlier, Ossenberg correlated a plus or minus 3% deviation potential for the distances noted and assumes the robustness of the jumper's technical model and speed transference. I'll skip over the next slide quite quickly as basically it's a correlation, a way to determine if a jumper improves their 100 meter time, what their potential new long jump distance would be. I think I'll add to that, that if you can work out similarly with their speed over the final 10 meters of the run up, then you're gonna get as concrete or justifiable correlation as well. As coaches, or rather myself as a coach, I know that if a jumper can go from one dead to 0.97 over the last 10 meters of their run up using what I have, a free lap system, then they're gonna jump significantly further, as has been borne out by some recent performances from group members. Now, this next slide is particularly interesting, and it's a graphic that I've translated into a more modern computer version. And it's what happens at the flight phase for the long jump. So. S is the position of the center of gravity at takeoff, which is around the hip level. A is the takeoff board. B is the position of the center of gravity at landing. K is the highest jump point. And C is the point at which the center of gravity returns to the same level as which it was at takeoff. HB is the landing depth, which I referred to earlier, but see that as leg shoot and A to F is the total jump distance, i.e. the distance that the center of gravity travels across the whole flight phase. Landing depth, I think I need to say a little bit more about that because no leg shoots are optimized, or rather I should say that an optimized leg shoot is what the Germans are referring to with landing depth. That's getting the feet as far ahead as possible without the athlete falling backwards or over rotating forwards. So that's optimized landing depth. Again, I'll gloss over this slide and you can have a read of it in your own time. But basically it's just telling you and myself when I was reading the research how the Germans calculated flight time and how that has a relevance to determining jump distance. This next slide I will speak a little bit more about as is crucial to understand that once the long jumper leaves the board, their center of gravity, their flight path is determined and it can't be changed. So that center of gravity of the jumper will follow that curve no matter what happens. And the legs will either rotate under it or in front of it. So as the research indicates at takeoff, the path of the center of gravity cannot be altered. Okay, so what about technique? While the Germans indicated that favor was shown toward the hitch kick, there is one telling sentence which I believe reflects what I've always believed as well. By means of kicking out of the lower part of the swing leg, a retardation of running further is achieved. So, so basically what the Germans are saying is that by extending the lower leg after takeoff and then pulling back into the hitch kick, you're going to slow down the movement in the air and give the jump greater control and push the landing depth further. Interestingly, the German research also went into a little bit about conditioning and what's going to develop great long jumpers. So looking at this slide here, they say jump capacity is based not only on the strength of the jumper's muscles, but on the capacity for reaction. Now I see this as being the eccentric braking to concentric propulsive force. Then they say the most important factor for consideration is not rapidity of movement, but the speed of development of the maximal tension within a period of time. So on the long jump board, you've got eccentric 
to concentric movement. So they're indicating that it is the development of maximal tension at that point which determines greater or lesser amounts of force production. They then single out what they call a low jump as being a decisive conditioning method. Basically a single or double low leg drop jump. The researchers have all vertical jumps carried out in this way and that's why I've added in fast eccentric. So basically what they're indicating is that they are looking to create that stretch reflex very very quickly to get that maximal tension within the muscle. And I've always believed in the efficacy of drop jumping as a training means and indeed fast eccentric movements and eccentric movements. So an eccentric blocking jump, for example, you drop down and you block the landing or you can pull down very quickly into an eccentric blocking movement from a standing position or with the use of weights as well. So that's all about developing that maximal muscular tension. A kind of obvious summing up of what the Germans indicate in terms of improving long jump performance. They argue, as I say very correctly, that improvements in speed, height and landing depth will bring about improved jump distances. Now, I say that we'll, we will all be aware of the importance of speed, but the other factors of jump height and landing depth are as important. So as coaches, we're going to look at ways to improve the height the jumpers can gain off of the board and how they can improve their landing depth. Obviously, improving those qualities will be vital to improving long jump performance. In the second part of this video, I'm going to take a look at some more contemporary research from World Athletics and also some contemporary Australian research which looked into run-up speed and correlated the optimum speed for the jumper in terms of jump distance and takeoff angle. I'm going to see whether that research correlates back to the Germans research. I hope the information provided in this video will help you gain a better understanding of how long jumping works and the factors that affect it and the biomechanics that affect the flight phase for example when jumping. The German research gives us a good starting point in terms of looking at speed input utilizing the 100 meters and its correlation to jump distance. So we can use that table, that chart, to look at how far our jumpers should be jumping. And if they're not jumping as far as the table indicates then we've got to do something about it. Also the notion of landing depth is very important to consider and about how you can optimize the landing position of your jumpers post technical execution. Well of course it's part of the technique but the hitch kick has to be performed for example in a certain way that enables the leg shoot to fully extend to get that optimized landing depth and we need to understand ways to improve jump power in particular so that we can get greater height from the board and greater transference across the board. Now of course there's a lot more to it than this kind of overview of this particular piece of research but I think it's very useful because I think it contextualizes and puts in a relatively simple way what long jumping is all about and the factors that we need to work on as coaches to improve it. If you like this type of more detailed content then head over to the channel's homepage and click on the members button and there you can see the coach athlete offer and indeed other membership offers that all help support the channel and also hopefully help you become better athletes and coaches. As usual thanks for watching and good luck with your training and no doubt competitions that you've got now in the summer season. If you have any specific questions on the subject matter of this particular video or indeed any of my others then do leave a comment in the section below or through my other social media.